This week's Heroes Magnified video, we'll be looking at Trickster, the epic dark DPS hero. If you're wanting to see the best methods involved for building him and how best to use him, then this is the video for you. For those of you who follow the focused dungeon pool strategy, today's video is going to show off the end result of all that hard work for the dark heroes. That hero is Trickster. Trickster is an event hero, meaning his medals are more difficult to get, and the general strategy is to max all of your other dark heroes, and then gather his medals exclusively through the daily dungeons. It is a long road, but once you have it down to just him, you can usually farm 60 to 70 medals a day for him from the daily dungeons, outside of a times 2 dungeon event. It is worth noting that because he is an event hero, you cannot use magic medals on him, making his medals even more valuable. How valuable is he, though? As I'd mentioned, he is a DPS hero. But oh, he is so much more than that. Trickster mixes DPS with crowd control in a very unique fashion. We're going to dig in deep on his abilities and discuss some good synergy options for him. Trickster is a late-game hero that should be a goal for most players at some point. Trickster is a male, magician, epic rarity, event hero. His medals come from the Easter event chest. Then you can grind out additional medals from expeditions as a bonus item in daily dungeons. Daily dungeons is the most effective method to acquire his medals, and I and that's what I personally did to max him out. Flipping his card over is where things get interesting. His one-star ability can cause a debuff, and while though stunning a frontline tank isn't very important, it can cause defense down, which is useful to your ranger heroes built for DPS. His two-star ability, Cards Cascade, throws three cards out that attempt to debuff the targeted enemy hero. These three cards hit the three frontmost heroes, which can be especially effective against enemies only running one tank. Some heroes may be hit with status effects that don't affect them, like Stun on Atlantis, for example. He is a standard AoE three-star ultimate attack called Cards Attack, which has a cool animation, but he shouldn't be built for his ultimate in my opinion. And finally, he has a 4-star ability to increase debuff time of afflicted enemy heroes. We'll discuss these merits and more in today's episode. Now in terms of move speed, he's pretty fast. As fast as some commonly used staging heroes. However, I feel it would be a waste to use him for staging, as there are other heroes that are better alternatives like Dark Wolf or Kasame. For guild raid events, there would be room for Trickster to be used for his debuff duration 4-star ability on Freeze and Nimble Knight survival teams, but he shouldn't be considered a required hero for either of those survival teams to be effective. Where Trickster shines head and shoulders above other heroes are PvP modes such as Arena, Guild Wars, Blitz, and Crusades, which uses PvP mechanics. Part of what makes Trickster so great is a high natural attack range, high attack speed, and the ability to cause debuffs on enemy heroes. Think of him to some extent like a sorrow, but with more to bring to the table. This defines why he shines for PvP-centric modes of the game. Because of his ability to cause a debuffing 2-star attack, we want to stack on as much attack speed as possible. This should be reflected in his runes, and ideally we should be aiming for 60% or better attack per second, while also stressing as much attack and attack range as possible. As you can see, I'm a good deal over this mark with mine, and this still gives me good room for improvement as I get better runes and rune dust to increase his overall effectiveness. A lot of players run precise damage and swift runes to get him to good attack per second levels. Now mine is at 73%, which is relatively close to the 60% target without using swift runes, um, but the goal for precise damage and swift should be 70% or better attack per second. I feel like I'm currently getting good value with my damage rage precise build, though I'll definitely be considering making the change to swift runes when I have the resources available to properly level those runes. Compared to other DPS-centric heroes, Trickster brings a new dynamic into the mix by dealing damage and having crowd control elements. When looking at team compositions to run with him, he offers good synergy for heroes like Monkey King, Thorn, and Freeze-time-centric water teams. In other words, 
He works well for extending the duration of negative status on enemy heroes. I love the synergy that my Thorn and Trickster have together, because he greatly extends her, da her damage capabilities by allowing her poison effect to last longer. Likewise, Monkey King applies a longer-lasting stun. There are lots of other heroes that apply status effects, and Trickster's 4-star ability increases time duration for many of these in a positive manner for you. Now, Mr. Moogle updated the PvP tier list made by Pookie and Medivh. He ranked Trickster as S tier, with the red gradient border, and I'd wholeheartedly agree with this. It is really tough to get him maxed and he is a cornerstone of endgame heroes at this point in time. But he is absolutely worth the investment, and in my opinion, is a very fun hero to run for PvP modes. I'd personally go so far as to say that he might even be an SS class hero, along with Ornok, representing the best of the best heroes for PvP. Now, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this ranking. Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you think of this, rating, this ranking that I've given. I plan to do an updated PvP meta video in the near future, and your comments could be featured in that video. Now, as I conclude today's video, I'd like to give a special thanks to Medivh for making the thumbnail for this video and all of our other thumbnails, and I'm very grateful for all of his hard work. If you see him on the official Discord, be sure to give him a shout out. I'd also like to thank Godzi Lab for sponsoring today's video. I'd like to thank several Discord users who helped contribute to the content covered today, namely RSDI, Longest Yaboy, Mr. Moogle, and Flocky. I'd also like to thank users such as yourself who watch my videos and encourage me to continue making content. Your contributions are more appreciated than you know. I'd like to take a moment to give a special shout out to Blood Reina, who has helped out with some of the content we've covered on this channel as well. Now, if you'd like to support this channel in other ways, there are several things that you can do. Comments, likes, and subscribing are great ways to show your support. You can also show your financial support by donating to my Patreon. The link to, my, to become a patron is in the description below. And that's all the time we have for today. I appreciate you watching this video through to the very end. Thanks for watching.